is an, I don't just turn to art in good times. Um, I turn to it at the worst of times. And I was thinking about that this afternoon that um, that's one of the things that I think artists as a rule are wonderful at is that at their worst, they will produce some of the most amazing work. Hmm. And there aren't a lot of jobs that you can say that about where that at yeah, their worst, right. they're going to turn out the most meaningful product that, I mean, that you, you can't even imagine. Start talking about a little bit about yourself too, as well. So, um, were you born in Georgia? Yeah. So I was uh, originally born in um, Decatur, uh, Dor down in, uh, in Atlanta, um, at a hospital. It's not there anymore. It's called DeKalb General. And um, so I uh, lived in uh, it's kind of the Stone Mountain, Tucker, Decatur area uh, when I was really young, and and uh, my folks moved uh, up to the north part of town. Uh, in the mid 80s and then uh, I went out to a military boarding school when I was about 11 and uh, that's pretty much where I kind of kind of grew up and developed most of my personality and things like that style yeah. and uh, went to uh, went to school and then uh, I found Woodstock when I got out of high school and um, I, when I got here I uh, I thought Woodstock was in New York, uh, you know, Illinois, but uh, I just never heard, having been from Georgia, I, I'd never heard of Woodstock myself, so it was a whole new uh, world and learning about Marietta and Cherokee County and things like that, so it's just sort of where I ended up um, through my experience and uh, just always enjoyed being here. This is where I call home now, so. So with the local order skill, you know, I, I sponsor that. Um, Put in my time and effort and money and stuff into it so it's you know it's yeah. um in whatever way we can connect those two things is good it's could be helpful so um you know of course everybody's trying to promote the business name but i want to use this as a, an opportunity to help promote other business names yeah you know to help that's the idea of the local artist guild is to just find ways to solve problems and work together to help lift each other up uh, there's a lot of you know things that go on and what all of us do and and uh you know the local artist guild is just uh it's a, a vehicle to try to help each other as neighbors so yeah so anyway how, how did you come to find out what the local artist guild was that from like basically all the other artist guilds that started existed? um no actually uh, a good friend of mine that's a musician uh, encouraged me to start a, a local drink and draw type deal and to figure out how to um monetize that uh, in some way or another. And um, it didn't feel right for me the way I understood the local market here and the artists that I knew of and knew about and personally connected with or otherwise. Um, I wasn't going to pay um, to do something like that. So I wouldn't really expect anyone else to. So I, I really just thought about it long and hard and then just sort of developed this. Um, this ideal that I wanted to find like minds that are looking to, that are sort of on a similar path, even, you know, they're all very different, but the similar path is like, ultimately we're all looking to sell our work and, uh, you know, find some sort of uh, financial success in what it is that we're passionate about. And that's, you know, really important to me. So ideally, you know, after I researched, you know, what is this thing going to be called? And this and that, I just looked up what a guild was and, you know, guilds predate what we know now as uh, um, unions and they have their, they have their purpose and, the, you know, the pros and cons. And uh, that's, I think that's the nature of, uh, of everything really. But the idea was to work together towards common goals, which is to increase everyone's value um, by, by means of working together. You know, if everybody is lowball and we're all hurting each other and nobody's making any money, not that it's all about making money, but it's important that it's everybody working together, right? Working this. together, you know, trying to find some, yeah. What spurred you to get into art? The the basis of starting your art 
pieces and wanting to sell art? Well, wanting to sell, there's a couple questions in there. So I'll, I'll see, let's start with the first part. What made me want to get into it? So when I was um, about 20, um, my uh, counterpart at the time and I, we decided to move forward on having a house built. And um, uh, at that age, that's a lot to deal with. Um, so we um, had this house built and got married and, and um, brand new house, you know, you've got these big white walls and, um, and that was very boring to me. And so um, right about the time we both moved into this new little house, we both lost our jobs. And I'm looking at uh, boring walls and I decide to um, get some supplies together, which is mostly like scraps of wood and whatever paint I could afford at the time, leftover oil paints from a single class that I had taken. And, and so I just kind of started to utilize my time to essentially produce paintings to put up on all these walls and add color and uh because i really like colors you can probably tell you wanted um, something to fill it in yeah yeah i mean I, I like i like interesting spaces and interesting things to look at and um so over the course of time you paint you paint the paintings and uh, i was working out of the small corner of my garage at the time and i had sort of outgrown that space so i would be working and paint would be getting on other paintings. And so that's where you get to the point where you realize that the only way to get stuff out is to find a way to push it out into the world. And uh, that, was, <clears throat> that was a pretty scary time because then you realize that you have to go out and socialize and you know, integrate a little more into society when you maybe you're more interested in just sort of being a loner and uh, staying closed in. But um, Trying to see who's going to get your art pieces. Yeah, who's going to understand and and um, or enjoy it or give you know the kind of feedback that you'd like to get. Um, but what you learn in that process is that um, everybody doesn't necessarily like what it is that you do, and everybody doesn't have positive feedback. But through all of those conversations that you have, it helps you grow and helps you better understand the reality that something that you produce or, or the output of your effort doesn't necessarily satisfy the next person that you meet. Um, so you just, you sort of keep, you just sort of keep doing that. You know, um, art's one of those things I never really put down. I just, I always came back to it. And uh, over time I collect, <clears throat> sort of my process is to collect material. And I think this is every artist is you collect material and supplies and push out work. And sometimes the collecting material and supplies is much easier than the pushing out the work. And you can push work out, but uh, the sales is where it gets really tricky. And, mm -hmm. and that's a whole nother, whole nother thing. It's, a, it's an interesting uh, a thing to, to try to figure out because um, sales isn't generally why you start on this uh, sort of a thing. It's not your basis, right. but it's going to be where the art you want it to go you sure. want it to reach people basically. right absolutely and you know getting uh getting work in front of people is a task and uh finding yourself in conversations with people organically about what you do and your passion that can be a task uh and it it um it can be awkward sometimes you know you just yeah. say hey i painted this painting do you want to buy it and and uh it would be great if it was that simple, but it, it's just not really how it is. You know, it, it takes a, um, a lot more development of, you know, relationships and things like that to really, you have to find ways to connect to people with people. And I know that's a big catch word and buzz, uh, buzz idea right now, but it, it, it that's very real. Uh, relationships are important and, and connectivity is just as important as that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So what influences your style of your artwork? What really makes these pieces your pieces? Well, um, I, I tell people sometimes that I, I operate in about 272 styles. And um, the, way I, uh, the way I work is um, I'm really about the process and uh, the movements and um, the the handling of the brush and the picking up of the paint and the moving the paint across the surface and and um, the brush strokes and the the glide from you know your medium 
to the to the surface and uh, the things that come from that. So I tend to operate in the moment. Um, so, and I, I really enjoy color. Um, I, did I miss your question there? I'll make sure I'm, I'm just not going on. Oh, it's no problem. But um, I, I, I like to study other people's work, that's for sure. And I think most artists try to figure out how other creatives did things. And that's kind of the basis of it for me. When I see something new or something I'm attracted to, I really do what I can to kind of pick it apart and figure out what was done to produce that end result. And, um, but at the same time, I generally don't work towards an end result. Um, I, again, I go through the process and the steps until something inside sort of clicks and says it's complete. Uh, but what makes what I do mine is um, I operate in a lot of layering, um, a lot of um, high impact color uh, and contrast and uh, different mediums. I like to move around different mediums. Um, I use sort of an anti-disciplined discipline approach where I do try to be creative um, or solve some sort of creative problem or move some paint um, every day. And I think that's a, um, a piece of advice I would give anybody that wanted to um, consider the idea of uh, being an artist or a creative is to just do it every day a little bit and not just do enough to satisfy the fact that you accomplish the task. Yeah. You know, if you like to take Make sure you're keeping practice. Right? Yeah. You know, if, if you're um, a photographer, take photographs, take a lot of photographs, uh, edit photographs and, and dial in what it is that you do. You know, if you're a painter, paint, if you're, uh, uh, an architect and like to draw pictures of buildings, then do it. Um, you know, illustrators illustrate, but it's the people that, <clears throat> that I pay attention to the most that they do their job. Um, without, without restriction, they always come back to it. And you, you don't really know what's going on with them necessarily unless they divulge. But what you do know is that they're producing work or they're yeah. pursuing their path. And that's really important. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so with your artwork then, since you work in layers, is there any like special symbols or signs that you include in these pieces up here that like you might want to explain to the audience? So, you know, I do use some, um, some predetermined, uh, symbols that aren't, um, aren't really public knowledge or information right now. And mm -hmm. I share some of those at some point. I don't see any on hand, um, mm -hmm. but I use a lot of the primitive markings. You'll see arrows and boxes and squares and hash marks um, or tick marks. Um, I use some math and uh, numbering in a lot of things. Um, I use a, 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 a primitive crown symbol um, and... I think we got one of those with yeah. it actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but I, I have a tendency to come back to things that feel good to me and that resonate with what's going on with me. I love, you know, the, the flowers. I was having a, a brief uh, conversation with another artist some time ago. And I was like, oh, you know, I love these flowers that you just did. And, and he's like, well, you know, nobody hates flowers. And it's one of those things that it's a very safe topic. Um, and people do love flowers. They're beautiful. They're very, they're timeless and timely and uh, very temporary. So it's an, it's an interesting expression. So, but yeah, a lot of layering and um, a lot of color. <laughs> so you're talking a lot about the color of these pieces. And one of the most interesting things to me is material and the medium. I was really interested in what your major medium that you like to use. Uh, so my favorite medium is found material, um, which generally means free or uh, found at a thrift store or something like that. Uh, those produce really good results on the back end um, as far as you know things like sales. Um, I primarily stick to uh, stretch canvas and, and I've, in the past couple of years I started working on um, 
watercolor paper, okay. um, a cold press, um, a very heavy weight cold press watercolor paper. I like the, the rough surface and um, I'll tape off the edges so it has sort of an implied mat. And uh, it's just been a really fun um, change of pace. Uh, as far as the different mediums I'll use, like I said, I was talking earlier about kind of a, an undisciplined discipline approach where uh, I'll use um, watercolor, washes, acrylic, um, Sharpies, uh, I'll use um, oil-based enamel markers, uh, spray paint, high flow acrylic, um, really anything that's You're with, all yeah, that. with yeah, anything that's really within reach in, in right. my workspace, I'll grab it. Um, I'll go for certain effects, I'll grab really low quality paint uh, to go over top of higher quality pigments uh, to get different washout effects and things like that. So, um, I, you know, I've learned from other people about uh, the correct order of operations for different mediums. And, um, and I, I, it's great to have that information so that when you are doing it wrong and something doesn't go the way you anticipate it, you're like, oh, well, that's because X, Y, Z, I put, um, you know, watercolor on top of some enamel and it just puddled up. Well, you know, those things sort of come with experience, but at the same time, there are real simple uh, ways to do that so it does not occur. Uh, but again, I just like to kind of go operate in the moment and apply things as as I see fit in the moment. So Yeah, and that probably comes off as a new technique, too. It'd be, it'd be cool to think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So then going through all that materials, I mean, that sounds like a lot and you're learning through like experience and everything. So what would you say would be the hardest thing about creating your artwork and pieces? Uh, prob I mean, hands down, the hardest thing, and I think most creatives deal with this uh, unless they're, uh, you know, at the top of the game is, is sales, you know, is figuring out how to... Uh, not only get a product to the market, but how to make it disappear from the shelf. And, um, you know, I, I don't create in a way that is, I've worked hard to, to try to work in an original format as much as possible. Uh, but at the same time, I'm not looking to pigeonhole myself into a place that I don't want to be. Um, so let's say I want to paint dogs. Um, because I know that dogs would be really hot in the market. So I paint um, really cool mm -hmm. dogs and I sell a lot of really cool dog paintings, but in 90 days I'm over it and I'm tired of it. Yeah, but it I know that that sells. Yeah. So it's, I've, I've tried to be really cautious about pigeonholing myself into one thing. And I, I think to an extent, I think it helps and hurts. It's hel it's helped um, and hurt, I think in this way that it's made some of my style um, maybe a little erratic um, mm -hmm. in a way that it can be difficult for people's minds to put things together to make sense. And we were talking about symbols um, and, you know, hidden things in paintings before. And, you know, I, I put a lot of writing, like a lot of words or phrases uh, in some of my work, and they're layered in mm -hmm. where some parts of them are exposed and some are, are masked out. So it sort of leaves the interpretation open uh, to the viewer. So, um, you know, a lot of different things kind of come into play, but I, I really can't, I couldn't nail down what I'm going to walk up to my easel and work on next or what I'm going to do. Um, because I, it, it's difficult to anticipate the emotional cocktail that'll, that I'll be carrying with me at that moment. And that's sort of what keeps me coming back is, is, uh, I don't just turn to art in good times. Um, I turn to it at the worst of times. And I was thinking about that this afternoon, that um, that's one of the things that I think artists as a rule are wonderful at, is that at their worst, they will produce some of the most amazing work. Hmm. And there aren't a lot of jobs that you can say that about, where that at yeah, their worst, right. they're gonna turn out the most meaningful product that, I mean, that you, you can't even imagine. It's kind of a conundrum. It's like you, you think about some of the most tormented artists in history um, and they just produce the most amazing pieces. I mean, you just imagine it's like 
from Beethoven, who was deaf, that he just worked by vibration and he produced some of the most beautiful songs. Right, some of the most piano. amazing sounds that you've, you've ever heard. And it, it, it really is uh, really is amazing. But yeah, that's a very interesting point. It's like out of your worst, you produce some of the best. Yeah, you know, a doctor at their worst, you probably don't want them <laughs> on the job that day or you know if you have a an, an attorney on a case and they're at their worst day that's not the day you need those people to show up you know you need them to, you need people at their best generally and people need art at their best also but uh, i think as a rule artists have a tendency to um find a way to develop their emotional turmoil and the tumultuous situations in life into all of these, you know, these things that we can see, these tangible um, products, yeah. um, art, you know, fine art and amazing things. So, nice yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. So, Murph, I've got a tough question for you. All it right. might uh, pry into the artist's uh, probably biggest conundrum. How long does it take you to complete a piece generally or when do you feel a piece is done? That's a really good question. Uh, I don't have a real concise, generalized time frame for um, du a, a, a project duration necessarily, uh, unless it's a, a commission job and I'm working on a timeline or a project, a mural or something like that, where there is a timeline. Um, and you know, a lot of that has to do with that. Uh, I rarely work on one piece at a time. Mm -hmm. So even before we got together and talked, uh, I was standing because I have a white shirt on. I picked up some white paint just to play it safe. But um, I I was working on a handful of paintings that are sort of rolling through my workspace at the moment. So I think I touched five paintings with paint before we sat down to, to talk for a little bit. Okay. And uh, so okay, I have a- Working for the day. Yeah, I have a, a tendency to work on multiple uh, pieces at once. And that can be anywhere from two to three pieces to a dozen. And that comes from uh, how boring it is to watch paint dry. Mm. So, uh, you know, you use a hair dryer or, uh, you know, you get out in the sun or things to help accelerate paint drying, but you can't really force it any faster than you can force it. But what you can do to optimize your time is work on something else. So uh, I, I have a, a real knack for process where um, I might throw a layer on a painting and but because i know it's going to take you know humidity um temperature all sorts of things play into duration of paint drying what kind of paint it is things like that so um to keep my workflow uh, going uh, i'll work on multiple things at once um, and the other part of your question about how i know something's done this is a really great question um because of how i work <clears throat> that that time can reveal itself really at any given moment. Um, but generally, um, I would say, you know, the way I operate with layering um, and the color schematics that I deal in, um, which there's not a lot of rhyme or reason behind it necessarily, uh, unless I'm sticking to a single color palette, um, is that I'll work really loose um, for, I would say, the first half of the life of a project. And then the second half of the life of that project, I'll operate in sections to say, OK, well, what's missing in this section or and step back and look and say, OK, well, what's missing here or what's missing here? And then once I've sort of. You're filling in. This yeah, section. sort of worked Good every. Possible. Yeah, every section yeah. to a place that feels correct. You know, I have to still have to be able to step back and say, okay, well, there's nothing else I can do here. So it's almost like I either work myself to a point of completion by default, or I sort of just say, okay, well, this is, I have to back off now or I'm going to overdo it. And that yeah. there's a fine line, you know, where you can overdo things. I think I have a tendency to do that. Um, but again, I love the process. So overdoing it really just means that I got to do more. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, and then, out of all that work, you know, you're getting to this 
this completion of the project, is there anything really that distracts you more than anything out of these? Uh, that's another good question. Uh, you know, I, I really don't get distracted in this work. Uh, I get, I get distracted at just at, at almost anything else. Um, what I'm, you know, when I should be focused on other tasks. Um, but this is one of those things that, um, because I operate in the moment, um, I've sort of built my entire life and the operations and the day-to-day -day things in my life not built it around it, but I've learned how to adapt what I do into my own, in my day to day. Um, so that, um, you know, like this afternoon after we, um, you know, we, we part ways today and, and, um, and, and get out of here, you know, I'll chill out for an hour or so. And then I'll, um, just sort of appear in my workspace and I'll turn some music on and stand around and piddle. I might clean a thing up here, clean a thing up there. Uh, but then I'll start again. I'll get back to the process. I'll pick up some paint. I'll pick up a utensil. I'll put some paint in a palette of, or something and then start, you know, I'll, I'll something will uh, sort of click to help me make a decision as to, you know, kind of where to take the first step. Um, but really everything in my life is, is for all intents and purposes, circles back to this it's good. so everything really is a distraction mm -hmm. so the things that are a distraction are the things that keep me from it so mm -hmm. uh, but they're not they're not negative things you know responsibility isn't isn't a terrible thing it's just part of being a grown-up you know so I wouldn't really put it on my list of distractions it's just part of life so life is probably the biggest distraction from creating yeah. You know, and it, and it's there's a lot lot to deal with. People people navigate a lot of stuff every day, and you know, at the end of my day, I want to be able to stand in my workspace and produce um, or absorb something that I've that I've put out. And uh, it's ninety nine percent of the time it's producing more because that's what helps me level off. Um, all of the complexities in life. So that's where I sort of, I'm all about the process, but in my head, it's where I'm processing my emotions and my thoughts and, and collecting myself, um, you know, for uh, the next day. So it's, it's a big part of um, who I am and the days that I'm not able to circle back to it, the more days I go without being able to, or keeping myself, or you know, things happen. You can't do something every single day. I mean, you can, but uh, sometimes life gets in the way. Uh, but the more days I go without, the more I want to get back to it. You so, start getting antsy. Yeah, so, so like my intensity level will kind of go up uh, and ebb and flow with that um, sort of keeping myself from it or being kept from it. So it's just yeah. something that I love a lot. <laughs> and it's, it's, uh, it's difficult to explain that. You're like, oh, why do you do this? And it's like, I don't, I just don't know how to turn it off really a lot of times. So it's a part of you. Yeah, it's, it's just part it's of It's always going to be. Yeah, and that's a great thing. That's a fantastic thing. So a big thing is you helped start the local, or you did start the local artists guild. Yeah. And one thing I wanted to ask you was where do you want to see the local artists guild going in the future? Where do you want the local artists guild to be? God, Any ideas? Yeah, you know, so it's been um, it's been a really interesting uh, path of the local artists guild. So I founded the local artists guild in uh, I believe it was July of 2018, and um, and it really started as sort of a call out to my market, uh, the market that I operate and deal in, uh, the creative market and the, uh, crafters, makers, mm -hmm. visual artists, um, really anybody, but it was sort of a call out to everybody to say, Hey, um, we're all trying to solve very similar problems. Why don't we get together and share ideas, 
um, talk about problems, talk about solutions, figure out what we can do to help each other, and genuinely just come together to try to create or further perpetuate the community that we all wanted to be a, that we all want to be a part of. And uh, to me, that's really important. I mean, there's nothing better than a great neighbor um, to to sort of be you know give a simile there. So the idea of the, on the local artist guild is to to do what we can to work together again, solve problems, talk about problems, uh, flush out issues uh, in the marketplace that we may, as a group, find ways to solve um, either as individuals. <clears throat> or as a united front in the market. And I think that's really important. Uh, you know, it's easy to, uh, goods and services, uh, art, things like that. It's really easy to lowball the next guy um, and then lowball the next guy and lowball the next guy. Um, things like pricing. But what essentially happens is it lowers everyone's value. Yeah. And, you know, ideally, I want to raise the value of my friends, colleagues, and neighbors uh, when it comes to uh, creative pursuits. And, and yeah, and, that, and that's super important. I mean, you're a photographer. You know, there's nothing I'd love more yeah. than to, to find <laughs> ways to help all of my photographer friends get themselves a raise. You know, uh, everybody deserves a raise, but it's difficult to get. It's Pri a community that kind of helps balance sure. the artwork of each other. Basically. Sure. Uh, you know, and find ways to, um, you know, pricing is a daunting task for creatives, but, uh, you know, which puts people in the beginning, it puts people in a position where they feel they have to give things away, which is mutually mutual and respectful, you know, when you give gifts and you're creative, but then you you go on and on and you keep going and you do need to sell some things. You can't always give everything away. You can't always, um, you can't operate a business based on favors. Yeah. Uh, you You're basically money. looking to make a career out of it. Sure. And so this is sort of, I wouldn't necessarily say a career group, but it's a group that's supporting each other's careers. You know, we're yeah. building careers. Out sure. Of so one of the things that I tell folks in our group is that um, we are not we are not each other's market necessarily. So I, uh, the people in this group aren't the, aren't my customer base essentially, mm -hmm. and vice versa. I am not necessarily the customer base of every person in the group, but at the same time. Um, it doesn't mean that inadvertently, you know, those things won't ha happen because I mean, it, other creatives, if somebody's looking for like a yeah, piece of yours, uh, in, they might go to one of your other members of the group right? and right. as the local artist guild, you're going to be able to point them in the right direction. The sure. whole point of the group is to point people in the right direction too. Right. And that's something that I've, um, that gotcha. sort of began to happen before I founded this group was. I would have people come to me about artwork they saw in town or installed in the coffee shop or a library and say, hey, do you know this person? And I would say, sure, um, let me get them to connect with you. Um, <clears throat> because, you know, when you see artwork out in the world, it's there's not a real, uh, there are certain protocols and every place is a little different, but if there's not a name and a phone number and email attached to that piece of work, uh, it can be difficult to figure out who originated that. So. Um, now I had a friend of mine reach out and say, Hey, do you know who painted this painting? And I said, of course I do. It's, you know, uh, this lady, she lives in town. And so I got him connected with her. Um, within a couple of hours, they, you know, they had worked that deal out between themselves. So that's perfect. Yeah. What better thing to help someone than to connect someone with a buyer. So that's something that, um, I'd really like to see, uh, come to fruition is, um, people just, um, do what they can to help their neighbors and um, my neighbor I mean you know your friends in the community that you're involved in um, because uh, you know I want to help other people because there are going to be times when I need help and I've spent the past couple of decades navigating uh, this path on my own and learning everything the hard way uh, which is has, has been an interesting uh, path but at the same time it's put me in a position 
or it helped me learn enough about how I know things should not be yeah. to help inform uh, the next generation or, you know, the people in the local creative community uh, around um, how things should not work. Or, you know, when people ask certain questions like, oh, yeah, you know, I've been there. So let's talk about this and see where the conversation goes and see if there's a solution and um, or another way to spin this or, you know, there's usually different ways to solve the same problem. And uh, just talking it out with somebody could be really helpful. Um, but I don't have all the answers and that's, what's so cool about having a uh, you know, a big group of creatives is that, uh, a lot of opinionated folks and, and, and they're happy to share, um, their experiences if they can relate it all. So they'll be a knowledge and wealth. Yeah, absolutely. And then everybody okay. learns from that dialogue. So it's super helpful. Uh, but the local artist guild is just something I'm, I'm really passionate about. Of course, with, uh, the pandemic that's been on, um, not been on hold, you know, there's an online group and page where we keep up with each other as best we can. Um, but uh, it's it's really an in-person type deal that, again, that's been on hiatus for a while. Uh, but we're about to get back into it. And, you know, we have weekly, um, we were doing weekly meetings. And uh, that's the idea is to not do it something once a month. We're gonna have meetings every other week in Woodstock. And then I'd use the other two weeks to go up to Canton. Because uh, there's a really healthy creative community um, okay. booming in uh, in Canton, uh, which is great because that's the, the the county seat uh, for Cherokee County. Uh, so it's great to see things develop and, and come along. So I've been in touch with a lot of folks in Canton and Woodstock and uh, Marietta even, and we've got some folks out in Jasper and in North Georgia, and um, it really it encompasses. A, so many disciplines uh it, it's really amazing um but i really hope to be able to help or just as many people as humanly possible and by means of hopefully having communicated to the community myself um that um i'm the guy that knows a lot of creatives around town so if you do need something Hopefully I can be a resource for that and source from this pool of just really amazing folks that all have so many skill sets that yeah. there's almost nothing that couldn't be resolved. So. Yeah, I think this will be a great way to definitely show folks more of that creative knowledge and definitely reach more people. I think having this local artist skill podcast is going to definitely help Absolutely. out a lot. And I think as we go through the months, as we go on, Having different people come in will be a fun experience every single time. Yeah, I could I could see a lot of uh, potential there, and uh, having you know interviews like we're doing here, uh, even conversations between uh, artists. Uh, I think that could be really fun. Mm -hmm. um, some demos that would be really exciting to do. Show people what uh, show people what they can do, and and uh, and and just try to do. I want to do my part to help promote all these local creatives uh there's i i think um it, it's incredibly difficult to make a livable wage <laughs> at a lot of these ventures mm -hmm. but that do, i don't think it's impossible yeah um money is a tough subject um but it's um it's one of those things you know i sort of live by the standard that you do what you got to do so you can do what you want to do and um, that don't, doesn't always really connect well with, um, you know, the path of an artist. Uh, but, I'm, you know, I like to be responsible and pay my bills, take care of my kids. And I encourage other people to do the same thing because until those minimal, you know, requirements are met, I don't get to mill around in my workspace or uh, do the local artist guild podcast. Um, yeah. You know, I kind of have to have my stuff together before before I can come to the table with something to offer, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's that's what I'm ready to do. I'm ready to to um, to help this group of people that have sort of amassed themselves through um, you know their own connectivity and communicating. Um, inviting, you know, other creatives in. I mean, I didn't just invite all these people in. I posted about this a couple times and it started to snowball. People would come, more people would come. And, um, you know, 
finding ways to do the things that we've talked about over the years is really important to me. Yeah. Uh, doing art shows, that's very important to me. Uh, obviously that got put on hold um, for, the, for the whole world, you know? So I think we're in a time right now where the playing field has been leveled. And um, the people that have been handling things to the best of their ability and to keep up with happenings to still be able to, to forge ahead on their creative path is really important. And I, I, it's great to see new people surface um, and, and their trajectory change course to a more steep incline. It's great. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're seeing yeah. seeing a lot of things happen right now in the market, and it's really interesting to see, because um, you know, tough times they it does filter some folks out. So, um, but it also leaves room for other people to bubble up to the top. So, my interest is in helping um, really anybody that I can help get connected to resources or other people in the community, uh, whatever that means. So, yeah. yeah. Well, it's been a great time having you here. This yeah. has been a good podcast, and we enjoyed uh, talking to you. Definitely getting a little info about your artwork, too, and more info about the Look Artist Guild. I appreciated having you here, Murray. Cool. Well, hey, thanks a lot, Nicholas. Look forward to next time. We'll, uh, I'll see you back here again. Sure.